Hello and welcome to the Best Life Podcast, where we here at Ultra are helping you live your best life. I'm Tony Beyer, and we're so glad to have you here with us today. And yes, we're talking about the pandemic again and how it has many of us spending more time at home, whether it be that people are working from home, it could be that hours have been reduced at work or even jobs being eliminated. The pandemic definitely has people looking for opportunities to make a little extra money or perhaps go into business for themselves. In fact, a recent study by researchers at the Peterson Institute for International Economics, that's a mouthful and it's full of people that know a lot more about this stuff than I do, found that Americans started 4.4 million businesses last year, which was a 24% increase from the year before. So if you're interested in starting a business or perhaps a side hustle, you're definitely not alone. And this is the podcast for you because here with me today are two experts from Ultra's business banking department. We have Emily Medvecki from our Clarksville, Tennessee market. Hi, Emily. Hi, thanks for having me. And we also have Walt Szymanski, who works with businesses here in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Welcome, Walt. Hello, glad to be here. Again, thank you both so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. And at the top of the show, we were talking about the pandemic, and I was curious what you both have seen this past year in terms of business and how that has affected our members. I think over the last year, year and a half, you know, we do work with a lot of different types of businesses. Certainly the retail industry, the hospitality industry has suffered greatly. We've seen and we continue to see some investment from our federal government come into these businesses, and hopefully that's going to sustain them and keep them going until, you know, we're fully opened back up. But I just think overall, from my perspective, the the grit and determination of a lot of these business owners to, you know, continue doing their passion and doing what they love has been inspirational. And it, I, I know it's helped me and it helped a lot of our relationship managers, you know, continue doing what we can to help them out as well. And Walt, how has your experience been with the pandemic, with those businesses and business owners that you work with? Yeah, that's been really eye-opening. Like Emily mentioned, there's been a lot of different types of businesses. And I'd say even just the phase that a business is in, we've seen a whole gambit of that as well, too, where there are businesses that have actually done better than they've ever done, you know, during this last year and a half. And they've got different challenges uh, than a business who maybe is really hurting. I mean, yeah, a lot of hospitality restaurants have been really suffering, but instead of people spending money on those types of places, they're going to other places, which has caused different you know, supply chain strain on things and difficulty getting inventory in some cases. And so it's been really interesting. And has, the pandemic has definitely not affected all businesses the same, to be sure. And, you know, whether it's, you know, tremendous growth, you know, that comes with some problems if you're not ready to handle it. And so we think we've been able to really help businesses in all those different phases as well uh, with whatever their cash flow or capital needs may be. That's great that we've been able to provide that help to businesses. And that's an interesting point that not all businesses have struggled during the pandemic. Some have even boomed. And Walt, talking about keeping businesses afloat and helping them financially, how much was Ultra involved with the Small Business Administration, you know, those SBA loans uh, that were provided to small businesses last year? In just in 2020 alone, I know we did over $33 million of SBA PPP loan volume, which was a program that the SBA offered, of course, that we helped out to do. And Emily and I were certainly involved a lot in those ones, including, you know, working a lot of weekends, staying up overnight a couple of times. But we're really happy to know that that much money went out into our communities, you know, where our markets are here to really help business owners stay afloat and be able to keep their employees paid and stuff. And a lot of people are going to be happy when this is all over and we're included in those too. But I think there's a lot of good that came out of this too. I agree that it's good to know that we can take away a couple of positives from all of this. And I know we can't wait to get back to normal or maybe some sort of new normal going forward uh, when all this ends. But at the top of the show, I did mention that there are a lot of new businesses that were started last year during COVID. And Emily, what are some things a new business owner or someone thinking about starting a business should know before seeing someone like yourself, someone like Walt, when it comes to getting financing for their business? I get that question uh, quite often. And my response for that usually is along the lines of, you know, just tell me in a written format what you would spend half an hour or so telling me about your business. I need to know a lot, but I need to know it in a concise format. And I really need to know it from your consumer's perspective. You know, it's the who, what, when, where, why, how, all of those questions about your business. And it needs to also 
include your financial projections and usually in a three-year format. So what I mean by that is I need to know your sales, uh, your cost of goods sold, your expenses, and I need to know that usually in year one projected out by the month and then consecutive years following for at least three years. And of course, you know, we're not looking for exact figures. We know that these are estimates, but they do need to have some thought put into them. Those financial projections aren't usually the most fun part uh, for entrepreneurs, especially people who are creative minded. But they're arguably the most important part, and they're the part I flip to first. But yeah, a good business plan is going to be a guidebook, you know, to your business. It should reflect your well laid thoughts out there in a readable format. Again, that any reader should be able to understand and follow. That's great information for new business owners. And again, we're speaking with Emily Medvecki, who's a relationship manager for Ultra in Clarksville, Tennessee. And we also have on the line Walt Szymanski, who's also a relationship manager in our business banking department here in La Crosse for Ultra. Now, what if someone has an idea for a business, but they have no idea where to start? Or if they have questions on how to put together a business plan like Emily was talking about, What are some resources or places aspiring entrepreneurs should go to get some help starting their business? I say don't try to invent the wheel. There's a lot of good resources out there. SBA.gov has some formats for you. Uh, You can Google business plans. They come in all shapes and sizes. The Small Business Development Center, which I think there's one in all of our markets. They're a really good resource. They're a, a free, they're a service provided to you, and they can help you with establishing that. Yeah, I'm glad we talked about the SBDCs too, because yeah, a lot of times if somebody comes in to talk to me here uh, and they're in that very early phase, you know, that's the first person I refer them to is uh, our local SBDC here. And they take them through what I like to kind of consider a business planning boot camp. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think what happens oftentimes is that people will go to our our ZR University, University of Wisconsin Lacrosse here. They might go and sit down with one of their people and chat with them about it and start in this process of building a business plan. And maybe during the course of building that business plan, that individual realizes that, hey, this really might not be for me. This, there's a lot more to this than I thought. You know, it's not quite as simple as running a lemonade stand. You know, <laughs> the best time to decide you're not going to do something like that is during that part of the phase, much more so than after they've gotten a loan and they're you know, maybe have employees and then realize, I don't really know what I'm doing here. It's not for everybody. And if it's not for you, the best time to determine that is through that business planning process, which I think does a really good job of really educating and enlightening people to what this is really going to be like. It's awesome to know that there are some great resources available for business owners, in addition to everybody at Ultra and our business banking department. And that's a good point, Walt, that owning a business can be a risk and it's not for everybody. And now thanks to you, I'm thirsty for some lemonade as well. (laughs) So here's a question I like to ask every episode, and I'll ask it to you both. And Emily, I'll start with you. What's something in your business banking career that has surprised you or changed your way of thinking about business? Sure. I'm shocked easily. (laughs) I, you know, I've, I've been doing, I've been in business banking for a little over 15 years now, but I'd have to say when I started in banking and business banking, we saw very few entrepreneurs. It felt like an exclusive class of people that were entrepreneurial, but now the internet has developed more, you know, there's online marketing and selling platforms. I love to see how people use their talents and their passions to create really, and even to earn money doing it. You know, I was taught never to go into business for yourself because, um, you know, it was a hobby that you enjoy doing. You know, they said, if you're going to do something, don't make it something that you really enjoy doing. And I, I thought it was hilarious, but it's really because your talent is in, in the hobby and not making a living doing that hobby, right? So I think that's changed because the accessibility people have to tools, marketing, a customer base now, you know, people love supporting their local economy. They love to know that their dollars are staying local. And, you know, I certainly hope that continues to develop, but it it just surprises me now that shift has come from, you know, Maybe you shouldn't go into business for yourself doing something you love to, hey, you can go into business for yourself doing something you love, and here are the tools that can keep you going and doing that. That's great. And I know someone much smarter than myself once said, if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life, right? (laughs) Excellent. And Walt, uh, has anything blown your mind or changed your way of thinking in your career working with businesses? 
Boy, yeah. Uh, as far as things that were surprising to me, you know, it's the continually changing and challenging environment that we work in, I think. And there's been businesses that we've seen that have started up and thought they'd be great, and they have really not. There's businesses that we thought would start up small and have really blown up tremendously and are, you know, on to multiple phases in different parts of, their, of new businesses as well. And so the thing, I guess, that really surprises me that stands out to me is that if well-nurtured, really any business idea can turn into something successful as long as the owners are really fully engaged in it and have a real big vision for the future. Businesses that seem like they're more short-sighted are the ones that seem like they don't last as long. But, you know, the businesses that do seem like they have a, a greater purpose and they really, truly are solving a problem are the businesses that seem like they do better. Yeah, that makes perfect sense that businesses that have a plan and have people that are all in are the ones that are more likely to be successful. Now, if a business wanted to contact Ultra for their business banking needs and see how we can help, how would they go about doing that? So ultra.org is the best place to start. We've got a business tab. It's got a lot of great information, including our contact information. So just picking up the phone, calling us, stopping in. I'm at our Madison Street branch here in Clarksville or by email. But yeah, I would direct them to our website first and let them kind of look through that just because it's, it's really a great, great website with a lot of information on it. And they can read our success stories and see some videos there. Excellent. That's great information, Emily. And of course, we have people that work with businesses in the Tyler, Texas area and also in our Rochester, Minnesota market as well. And Walt, how would businesses contact you or others in the business banking department at Ultra here in the La Crosse area? Yeah, it's been much the same way. You know, Ultra.org will have all of our direct contact information as well. And most of us that are in the business area here work out of our Lowe's Boulevard office. And so they're always free to stop on by. You can chat with any one of us about things. One thing that I know I love doing, and I think Emily probably does as well too, is being able to go off site and see the businesses in their natural environment, so to speak. But, you know, I, I really do enjoy being able to go out to different places and see what their operations look like. And you get to walk around their production area or whatever it may be. And that's one of the things I like the most, I think, about what I do is really getting to have that relationship with our borrowers and things to see what their life looks like more from their own perspective. Absolutely. Well, we're right about at the end of our time. Could talk to you both all day, but uh, we really do appreciate both of you taking the time to help our members learn more about what it takes to start a successful business and how Ultra can help. And thanks again for being on the podcast. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Tony. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That was Emily Medvecki in Clarksville, Tennessee, and Walt Szymanski in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Both are relationship managers in the business banking department with Ultra. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Best Life Podcast presented by Ultra Federal Credit Union. We appreciate you taking a moment to learn how you can live your best life. If you have a question or a topic you'd like us to cover, shoot me an email at tjbuyer at ultra.org. And who knows, it may even make it into a future episode. Don't forget to follow the Best Life Podcast pretty much wherever you get your podcast or find it on our website at ultra.org. Thanks again. Be well, and we'll talk to you again soon.